This is the fifth video on block diagrams. In this video we're going to talk about shortcuts. So let's assume that students are familiar with deriving closed loop transfer functions from first principles. So that would be writing equations for each takeoff point um, around each block and summing junction and then solving all the equations you uh, result from that as simultaneous equations. This video is going to look at how we can do things a bit more quickly. So how can we extract common results or observations from the long process and thus derive transfer function representations of quite complex block diagrams but with a minimum of algebra and effort. Let's start with a very simple loop. So this is a loop that you will have seen in the previous video. And in the previous video, we derived these transfer functions. So the transfer function from R to Y, there it is, is GM over 1 plus GM. The transfer function from R to U, there it is, is M over 1 plus GM. And the transfer function from R to E is 1 over 1 plus GM. Now, you might notice something interesting about these transfer functions. So I'll write it down here in case it's not clear. They all share the same okay, denominator. So you can see that they all share the same denominator which is 1 plus gm. Now that's quite interesting. The 1 because it's unity uh, negative feedback and you can see that from this summing junction here and the GM is a product of all the blocks in the loop and you'll find this pattern occurs in many many feedback loops so it's quite useful to recognize so the denominator I've got 1 plus the product of all the blocks in the loop now what about the numerator well you'll see for y I've got g times m so again, the product of all the things in the loop. And what's interesting is to get from R to Y, you'll see that arrow I'm joining there, you've gone through G and M. How about U? You'll see U, this one here, I've got M over 1 plus GM. And to get from R to U, you'll see I've just gone through M, and hence the M in the numerator. And finally, to get from R to E, you'll see I've just got a 1 in the numerator. And if I draw an arrow here, you'll see to get from R to E, I just go through a 1. So there seems to be a pattern here. And what we want to do is show a bit more carefully how this pattern arrives and therefore give you confidence in using it. So let's go back to a very basic loop with just a simple block and derive this from first principles. So derive the transfer functions from R to E and R to Y. And then this will give us a starting point for our later shortcuts. So here we go. Here's the algebra that we derived on the previous video. Now there's one subtle difference. First line the same, E equals R minus Y. Second line the same, Y equals M times E. But you'll notice on the third line, what I've done is I've taken this ME and I've simply put it in there for Y. So I'm calculating E. And this is going to be the basis of this video. We're going to start by deriving this E signal, the signal that comes out of the summing junction and build everything from there. So the transfer function for this E or error term, here it is, you've got E equals 1 over 1 plus M times R. So what's the key observation? I've got a 1 in the numerator and I've got 1 plus M in the denominator. And you will see as we do more examples that this is a common pattern for the signal that comes out of the summing junction. Now just for completeness, let's think now about how I would get y. Well this is going to be straightforward because I know that y equals me. I've written that just up there, if you've forgotten. And therefore I can write y equals m over 1 plus m times r just by multiplying what I had for E. OK, a slightly more difficult loop. You'll see in this loop I've got three blocks. I've got an M of S, a G of S, and a H of S. And again, the focus here is to find the transfer function from R to E. I'm not going to do anything else at this point. Just find this 
E signal, which comes as the signal coming out of the summing junction. So again, we'll go down and we'll do first principles uh, modeling and show what arrives. So I start with the summing junction equation, E equals R minus W. I then send E through the block M to get U equals ME. Then the U signal goes through the block G to get Y equals GU. And the Y signal goes through H to get W equals HY. Now clearly, I can write, if I put it here, W equals H G M E. You'll see that by going through the last three of those equations. And therefore, I can reduce E equals R minus Y to this equation, or, in summary, I can get this for E. So E equals 1 over 1 plus MGH times R. So what do you notice? What's the key summary? I've got a 1 in the numerator, exactly the same as in the previous example, and I've got a 1 plus MGH in the denominator, where MGH is the product of all the blocks in the loop. And this is the pattern that you will see over and over again. OK, so we've got an identical result to the previous example. We've just replaced the M by MGH. We've just created a product of all the blocks in the loop. So a summary. If you want to find the transfer function between the loop input into the summing junction, we've used R, and the signal immediately after the summing junction, we've used E, for a single feedback loop, then you will end up with this as the solution. The transfer function is 1 over 1 plus the loop transfer function. I should put here the closed loop transfer function. Maybe if I put C, uh, CL here so you can see. So the closed loop transfer function is 1 over 1 plus the loop transfer function, where loop transfer function is everything in the loop. And you can think of any simple examples that you like, and this result will always come to be the case. So what we're saying is if you've got a summing junction with R coming in here, you've got something else coming in here with a minus and E coming out, then what you will get is E equals 1 over 1 plus, I'll just write loop for loop transfer function, times R. You will always get this pattern. Now, we're going to use this result to derive transfer functions for the other signals in the loop, because we've got this fixed result which is easy to prove, and so it's a very easy start point to get the other results. So here we go, same loop again, I've got M, G and H, and you'll notice that the only difference with the equations that I've put down here is I've actually written out the E that we just derived. So there it is, E equals 1 over 1 plus M, G, H times R, and I've just repeated the other equations, U equals ME, Y equals GU, and W equals HY. And so all I'm going to do is substitute E into U to find U. So I can now write U equals M over 1 plus M G H into R. And then I'm going to substitute U into the um, Y equals GU expression to find Y. So I get Y equals g m over 1 plus m g h into r. And then I'll substitute y into the w equals h y to find w, and I get w equals g m h over 1 plus m g h into r. So you see the pattern. In order to get the transfer function for u, I look at the blocks that I pass through to get from r to you. So I pass through just the M, and you see just the M in the numerator. The reason I know that is I'm starting from this E signal, and then I'm saying, how do I get from E to U? Well, I just multiply by M. So the forward path is just M, so I have just M in the numerator. All right, so the next question is, how do I get Y? So what's the transfer function from R to Y? Well, I'm replacing that by saying, how do I get from E to Y? Well, to get from E to Y, I go through M, and then I go through G. So in the numerator, I've got M and G. And finally, obviously, if I want to get W, I say, how do I get from E to W? Well, I go all the way through here. So you see, I go through M, I go through G, I go through H, 
And lo and behold, in the numerator, you've got G, M and H. So there's a simple pattern. The pattern is clearly that the numerator is given by the forward path from this error signal to the signal that I'm interested in. And the denominator is given by 1 plus the loop transfer function. So here's my summary. The transfer function between the input signal to the loop and any signal within the loop is the forward path from the summing junction to the signal I'm interested in divided by 1 plus the loop transfer function. So the forward path is the product of the blocks between the loop input and the variable concerned and the loop transfer function is the product of all the blocks in the loop. So an example for you to try. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, for example, find Z and P. So if I want to find Z and find out how that depends on the input signal R, so I've written down a block here, so I want to find how Z depends on R. So first of all, we said the denominator is 1 plus the product of all the things in the loop. So I've got 1 plus what's in the loop. I've got M, I've got K, I've got G, I've got T, I've got H. The next question is, OK, to get to Z, what blocks do I need to go through? So there we go, we'll draw now. What blocks have I gone through to get from E or the summing junction to Z? I've gone through M and K. So I just write M, K. Let's try the different example then. What happens if I want P? So again, I'll put the block down here, put R on the outside. Well, the denominator we've just done above, it's always the same, so I get 1 plus M, K, G, T, H, 1 plus the product of everything in the loop. For the numerator, what do I go through to get from this summing junction through to P? Well, you see, I go through M, and then K, and then G, and then T. So there's your transfer function relating P to R. If you um, want to confirm this yourself, you can do a long-handed first principles derivation as in the previous video. And hopefully after you've done that a few times, you'll be confident in this shortcut rule. So to summarize our conclusion, if you want to get the transfer function between an input to the loop and a signal within the loop, you basically write down the forward path between that loop input and the signal you're interested in divided by 1 plus the loop transfer function.